فطرت وإذا الكواكب انتثرت وإذا البحار فجرت وإذا القطور بعثرت علمت نفس ما قدمت وأخرت يا أيها الإنسان ما غرك بربك الكريم الذي خلقك فسواك فعدلك في أي سورة ما شاء ركبك كلا بل تكذبون بالدين وإن بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد beloved brothers and beloved sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله بياكم it's as we know it's we are still in long summer holidays and it's quite obvious that it is summer now well, to the New Zealand standard, Auckland standard, 22, 23 degrees for us is summer, uh, whereas in many countries possibly that could be considered as winter. However, this is the, um, uh, a long holiday for us, and also the long weekends uh, officially because of Christmas and New Year at the same time. Uh, a time to benefit, yes, alhamdulillah, um, catching up with the families and friends and organizing few um, gatherings, uh, uh, Islamic gatherings, uh, anything which is not haram can come under the category of uh, Islamic gathering. Islam is not against any form of culture as far as it does not contradict with the teachings of Islam. Um, today we are going to continue with Suratul Infitar. Suratul Infitar, known as uh, the cleaving, and we have taken few verses from that, and that was what was uh, in the beginning of the surah. And that is um, the first six verses, which basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which has reminded us when the heaven shall be cleft um, asunder, and the stars falling, and, and the seas which shall burst forth, and the graves which will basically turn upside down, throwing out everything which is in, in themselves out. And at that time, people will know of what they have forwarded for themselves of hereafter. And then Allah reminds us, Ya ayyuhal insan ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem, with which we concluded. And a very important point which I mentioned in my conclusion is that because of the karam, because of the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while we know that Allah is going to forgive us, we keep on committing sins. By Allah, if we knew that Allah is never going to forgive us, we would never have committed a sin known best to Allah. But Shia Allah, Allah ya'lamu man khalaq, wa huwa latif al khabir, the one who created us definitely knows better about us than anyone else then he knows the way Allah has created us 
that we are different from angels, those who do not commit any sins. That's the way Allah created them, that they are sinless. But because Allah has created the hellfire and the heaven for those who abide by the rules of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made deeds and actions for both of them. And then, due to the shortcomings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened the door of forgiveness to those who repent. And knowing that those who qualify all their life possibly for hellfire, Allah has opened and left the door open for each and every individual of those. If they do repent to Allah in time, that they will cross that hellfire and go to the other side to make it to the paradise. So hikmat Allah, wallahu a'lamu bi hikami. Let us proceed further to that. Alladhi khalaqa, alladhi khalaqa ka fasawwa ka fa'adalak. Who created you, that's Allah, fashioned you perfectly and gave you due proportion. Fi ayyi surati ma sha'a rakkabak, in whatever form he willed, he put you together. Now remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us two hands, two legs, and a type of body, if you go scientifically and try to study the structural part of it, leave alone the benefits of it in individual in sense, you'll be surprised with what these scholars have mentioned. The balance of our body, the capability and the flexibility of ourselves to deal with things in the way which is suitable for us to sustain ourselves for what we need and so forth. Continuously, you will be amazed with the way Allah has shaped you. And then, in whatever form he willed, Part of what these scholars have said, naturally, being tall, being short, being fat, being skinny, being white, being colored, or being black, or uh, being Arab, an Arab, or an Ajami, a non-Arab, or whatever, all these things is chosen for you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever Allah wants to make good would be good and the evil would be evil, though you would be responsible for any good or evil which you choose for yourselves, because that is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. Kallabal tukadhibuna biddin. Nay, but you deny a deen, that is the day of recompense. Wa inna alaykum lahafidhin. But verily, over you are appointed angels in charge of mankind to watch over you. We see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we have repeated multiple times, has two angels allocated to each one of us. Now these angels, their duties are different from the duty of the Qareen. The Qareen is our totally opposite of the angel. Qareen is from the family of the shaitan who is with us forever till your death. What happens to that Kareen after we die known best to Allah? His scholars, they say it is not being uh, mentioned to us. Do they die with us? Uh, where do they happen to end up known best to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because no text are, is there to support any of those. That is Kareen, the one who makes sure that you become deviant and mushrik and be amongst those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the Qareen. They have got, got nothing to do with the angels. How they work out with you is also something not really known to us exactly. Like you can say, if I lift this, it is going to go up. If I drop it, it is going to fall and possibly, probably will break. We don't know exactly in that calculation how they do. But they are, however, able to influence us in a way that we end up always having shortcomings in ourselves. This is the Qareen. Including him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the Sahabas, they said, even you, ya Rasulullah, qala na'am. He said, yes. Ghayru annahu aslam. Wa fi riwaya aslama. Wa fi riwaya aslamu. Three uh, versions have been mentioned of that in Sahih Muslim. And it means that, but as far as my Qareen is concerned, I'm safe of him. Or you can say with these three versions that he accepted Islam. Or that he has submitted himself in the same sense that he knows that he can't influence me. That is for him, Rasulullah 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but not for us. The more powerful you are in your iman, the harder your qareen works and the least it is able to uh, influence you. Now what the angels they do? The angels are there to record your deeds. Record your deeds. That is the good and the bad which you do. These angels also, scholars they say, they are there in a way to protect you in up to an extent. Of course the angels they can protect you from everything, from everything, so nothing can happen to you. But it is not like that. So the, as the angels, they do play a role in a way to influence you to come to the masjid and do all these righteous things and whatever. Wallahu a'lam How really that happens? Known best to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these angels, they yata'akabuna fikum malaika bil layl wa malaika bin nahar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the angels, they come in shifts at night and in day. Wa yashtami'un fi salat al-fajri wa salat al-asr. And they are with you in Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Asr, meaning that they get combined together. Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Asr is where the shift changes. So the angels who came in Salat al-Asr now, they will go back to Allah in Salat al-Fajr. And new two angels will come in Salat al-Fajr and stay with you till Salat al-Asr. And then the next two angels will come. Wallahu a'lamu bisawab, this is the way it is in Sahih Hadith. Then Allah is asking them every time when they go back, that well, how did you leave my servant? And Allah knows best how you, how you were and how when they departed you or came to you, you were. They would say, ya Allah, when we came to them, they were praying. When we left them, they were praying. That is Fajr and Salatul Asr. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, If any one of you says Amin during the prayer at the end of the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha, غير المقضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. So if you say Amin and it coincides with the Amin of the angels in the heaven, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. And we know the sunnah of the sahabas that after the imam says, Waladdalin, they used to say, Amin loudly. Loudly. Don't take this sunnah just as nothing. Take it seriously. Imagine when you say, the imam says, Waladdalin, of course, these scholars, they differ with her. You should wait for the Imam to finish Amin, or should you say before the Imam? The least I would say, do not say it before the Imam. Let the Imam say and say with it, with that, or after the Imam finishes, then say it, and not before the Imam. Now, when you say Amin, if your Amin coincides with the Amin of the angels in the heavens, your sins would be forgiven. So try to say it. Uh, naturally within the acceptable limit of Amin, not for sisters to say loudly, this is for brothers, the sisters will say it silently. Kiraman Katibin, the honorable Katibin, those who write the deeds, and these are the angels which we are talking about. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, inna ahadakum la yujma' fi batri ummihi arba'ina yawma. نطفة ثم يكون علاقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة that one of you would be gathered in your mother's womb for 40 days is نطفة leech like <coughs> have you seen the leech when you chew the chingum you see the kind Something similar to that. And then, alaqa for the next 40. And then, motqa for the next 40, 120 days. Now, if the child 
is less than 80 days. And abortion happens or any other thing happens and uh, the mother basically, the child dies for whatever reason uh, it happens and uh, the blood will naturally come out, the clot will come out. Do you have to bury it or not? Um, do you have to observe the nifas, which is the waiting period like after you deliver the child or not? These are the questions which is associated to this. If it is less than 40 days, the likelihood of it taking the human form is not there. And the ruh is not yet in the child to be. And that is why in whichever of those cases, the, if uh, uh, the, there is a miscarriage or an abortion, abortion should not be done unless it is uh, going to cause some form of severe uh, uh, danger to the mother to be, uh, to the mother then, otherwise not. So miscarriage and abortions in whichever of the two, um, when she gets clean or whatever, or even not yet to be, in all these situations she has to continuously pray, and she is just like any other normal woman. Once it is after 80 days, the third stage, that is when the scholars, they start and they say, if it still it is um, a, a, like a lump, a clot form, has not taken a form of a human being, then it's still the previous two stages, 40 and 40, will still apply here even after uh, 80 days, and that's after even 11 weeks. However, if any form of a human body takes place, like a hand or leg or something like that, then from here the rule would be uh, that uh, the blood coming out would be nifas or postnatal bleeding for which she has to observe her idda, waiting period, being unclean and cannot pray and the rest of the rules applies. If it does not, then it still she would be as if nothing has happened. Then of course it goes to the stage of 120 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the angel and the angel of course uh, is ordered to blow the ruh in the fetus, and then his ajal, his rizq, and his, um, uh, so his ajal, the life span, rizq, where he's going, how much rizq he's going to have, shaqi or sa'id, whether he's going to be a good person or a bad person, and the time of his death, all this would be written. All this would be written. And of course, in another hadith, it mentions Zakar Munsa, male or female, which the angel will ask Allah and Allah will give him the answer. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَالُوا بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ And one of you would do the acts of those who do the acts of hellfire, meaning committing sin and things. In another riwayah, فِيمَا يَبْدُوا لِلنَّاسِ according to what the people may be thinking or seeing. Now, there is a lot of explanation to this if I want to go in details. However, there Rasulullah says, فَيَسْبِقُهُ الْقَدَرِ فَيَعْمَلْ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا But then the Qadr comes, a preordained man, and he starts to act upon righteousness, and he goes to the Jannah. Before that, Rasulullah said, حَتَّى لَا يَبْقَى بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ النَّارِ إِلَّا قَدْرِ الشِّبْرِ That only a Qadr al-Shibr, I spend of a distance is between him and the hellfire, and then he starts to act upon righteousness. And the same applies vice versa, where a person may continuously do what the Ahlul Jannah would do, and then فَيَسْبِقُهُ الْقَدْرِ فَيَعْمَلْ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا وَلَيْعَزُوا بِاللَّهِ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَفْعَلُون they know all that you do. These are the angels. They record each and everything. So whenever you intend to do something righteous, the intention is there, and you were not able to do it for some reason, they write for you one good deed. But if you do it, then it is ten times. إِلَىٰ سَبْعِ مِئَةِ ضِعْفٍ وَإِلَىٰ دَعَافٍ كَثِيرًا 
up to 700 times and even more than 700 times. So say, for example, you had the intention to pray to Rakah Sunnah. You could not pray for some reason, valid reason. You got up to pray, some emergency happened, you had to go. You will be given the full rewards of those two sunnah one time. Say, for example, the reward is million. You will be given million rewards. But if you do pray, then minimum will be 10 million, 10 times. Up to 700 and more and more and more. Alhamdulillah. If you intend to do something bad and you did not do it uh, willingly, not that you could not, you did not, you will be given one reward equal to that type of sin which you had intended. And if you do, then it will only be written as one, one amount of sin. So if it is million sin, it will be million, it won't be 10 million. Blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then if you repent it is also deleted from your register. Innal abrara lafi na'im. Verily the pious believers of Islamic monotheism will be in delight. That is in paradise. Innal abrara lafi na'im. Wa innal fujjara lafi jahim. And verily the fujjar, the wicked disbelievers, politicians, sinners and evildoers will be in the blazing fire. Yaslawnaha yawmaddin. Therein they will enter and taste its burning flame on the day of recompense. Wamahum anha bigha'ibin. And they, that is the wrong towards the fujjar, will not be absent therefrom, meaning that they cannot get away from there, they cannot run, they cannot be absent, they cannot hide, they cannot delay themselves. It is precisely made for them and they are going to make it there. And what will make you know what the day of recompense is? Again, what will make you know what the day of recompense is? Double times Allah is reminding us. Yoma la tamliku nafsul li nafsin shay'a. Wal amru yoma idhil lilla. It will be, that is on, the day of, uh, on that day, the day of resurrection, when no person shall have power to do anything for another. And the decision that day will be holy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now even today the decision is in the hands of Allah. Nobody can run this world. But people seemingly and the creations of Allah seemingly run it because they have been given certain power within which they can act. But Yawm al nothing nobody would do unless which Allah says to do. Which means that there is no sin new committed on that day. But only with the obedience of Allah, a person will speak, a person will walk, a person will go, a person will do whatever he, wa he would do. So on that day, Alladhi huwa maliki yawmuddin. Remember, we always recite, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, ar rahman rahim Maliki Yawmuddin. And this is the Yawmuddin, the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, which we have been talking about here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy on us to be right, righteous servants. Remember, we all are sinners, but the best amongst us are those who are repenting. And the best amongst us are those who do not, whatever they commit, let others know about. We do not brag about it, we do not tell about our shortcomings to anyone, but it is between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then I and you and everyone keep on seeking refuge in Allah. And even if you are saintly enough, not committing anything knowingly, then the least still should be that you keep on doing astaghfar, 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 that is astaghfirullah. And one of the tips to say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al mulku wa lahu al hamd. Do this a lot in many of those tight corners, hardships in which you may be, Allah is going to grant ease to you through it. Wajazakumla Khiran, Rabbana Atina Fitunya Hasana, Wafina Khirati Hasana, Wakina Azabanar, Subhana Rabbi Karam al Azati Maisifun, Wasalamun Alam Musalin, Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Wasalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barkatu. Wa Jazakumla Khiran. Uh, special thanks for the family who has provided for the night. Enjoy your snacks before joining us in Salatul Isha. 
not